Hey folks, this is Kalani. One of the most successful features that was introduced during Legion was World Quests. Now, say what you will, but World Quests took the previously overdone daily quest system and gave it a massive facelift, disguising it almost well enough so that the underlying daily quest system barely peeks through. If you don't think about it all too hard, you might not even think you're taking care of some daily chores whenever you set out to complete a few World Quests. You don't have to pick them up from an NPC anywhere, so they don't count as daily quests, okay? On a serious note though, the shift from daily quests to world quests was a massive quality of life improvement. They're presented to you in an easy to digest fashion, allowing you to very quickly pick and choose which active world quests might be worth your time. They were a huge part of the game when Legion was brand new, everyone wanted to clear as many world quests off the board as possible for the varied rewards, reputations, and of course all those important emissary quests. So what about world quests in Battle for Azeroth? Is the system moving forward with the rest of us, or will it get left behind? I think the dev team would be a bit daft not to include world quests in the next expansion. Of course they'll be a part of BFA. There are a few interesting changes though, so let's have a look at how the world quest system is currently looking in Battle for Azeroth. Bear in mind that this is still beta footage, even though we're only three months away from launch, so everything is subject to change and may not reflect the finished product. Let's start with unlocking world quests. In Legion you had a few hoops to jump through and Battle for Azeroth isn't deviating too far from the Legion setup. Firstly, you'll need to reach the new max level of 120. World quests are for max levels only. Getting to 120 shouldn't take too long, you can hit max level without having to finish up every single quest line on your island, let alone the opposite faction's island, so you'll probably be left with a handful of quests and maybe a full quest line or two after you get to 120. After that you need to head to your faction's war campaign NPC. For the Horde that means running down to the docks to meet up with Nathanos, and for the Alliance you need to go see Halford Wormbane in Boralus Port. Don't worry about getting lost, the game will lead you to these NPCs fairly early on because the war campaign is quite important. They'll give you a quest which you might have already finished before you even pick it up. Gain friendly reputation with your island's respective factions. So the factions of Zandalar for the Horde and the factions of Kul Tarras for the Alliance. This is the same kind of deal as Legion. It's even called Uniting Kul Tarras and Uniting Zandalar. I'm pretty sure the Legion quest was called Uniting the Isles, but through questing in those areas to level up, you probably already have friendly with the factions you need or at least you should be fairly close. After handing in that quest, you unlock world quests for your faction's island, and you also obtain a new Flightmaster's Whistle to make the loss of flying a little easier to bear. But world quests on your faction's island aren't the only ones available to you. You're going to need to do a bit more legwork to unlock the others. Your war campaign takes you through this process quite nicely. Seeing as the Horde is well established on Zandalar but still wants to figure out what's going on over on Kul Tarras, it makes sense they would want to pitch a few tents here and there, right? Set up a base or two, just to keep an eye on the Alliance. The Alliance will obviously want to do the same on Zandalar, so that's exactly what your war campaign has to do. Set up a base of operations in each of the opposite faction's three zones, and in doing so you unlock the world quests from those zones. So you go from three zones of world quests to six after finishing the first section of the war campaign. You can actually do parts of your war campaign while leveling, so if you decide to do that route and you unlock your bases first, you still have to wait to unlock world quests via the friendly reputation quest, and then once that's done you will automatically unlock the others as well. So world quests will have you going back and forth between the two islands of Kul Tarras and Zandalar, but is this really going to be worth it? What about some shiny rewards for our efforts? Well, the world quests on the beta so far have a variety of rewards, so let's have a quick look. Perhaps the most important and most sought after reward early in Battle for Azeroth is going to be Azerite, which there seems to be plenty of world quests for. You can get small chunks of 50 or 70, or larger portions of 300 or 400. I like the fact that the numbers aren't all just one value, like they were for artifact power, there's a bit of variance there to make things feel a little more unique rather than just another token you've collected 100 times already. You can also pick up some gear from world quests, no surprises there. The items are currently set at 290 item level, but remember that these rewards typically scale with your own item level, so if you manage to get above 300, maybe the rewards will be a little better. There's also war resources, which are pretty self-explanatory, they're the resources that are going to fuel your war campaign and your mission tables for this expansion, so you'll probably want to stockpile those early on, and then a few world quests also reward a handful of gold. The last reward that comes from world quests is reputation, with the faction that the world quest is posted for. So world quests, which are for the Voldeni, will reward rep with that faction. World quests with the Zandalari Empire will make the Zandalari Trolls like you just a little more. That part of the world quest system hasn't changed, but something has been added to it. 
Scribes can create items called contracts, and it seems like there's one for every faction available to farm reputation with in Battle for Azeroth. There's contracts for the two neutral factions, the Champions of Azeroth and the Tortolan Seekers, one for each of the Horde factions, the Voldeni, Talanji's Expedition and the Zandalari Empire, and then of course three more for the Alliance factions, the Order of Embers, Storm's Wake and the Proudmoor Admiralty. When you use one of these contracts, you gain reputation with your desired faction whenever you complete world quests on Zandalar or Kul Taras. Now, whether or not you also gain reputation with the original faction the world quest is tied to, I'm not too sure, but I think you would only gain reputation with your contract faction, so at the start of the expansion this might be a little lacklustre, unless you gain a particularly strong benefit from reaching high levels of reputation with a specific faction early on. If the reputations have some awesome goodies on their Quartermaster vendor list, I could see these contracts being very lucrative and probably very expensive to purchase during the early days of Battle for Azeroth. But it's definitely a nice change that you can now farm reputation with a specific faction by doing any world quests, providing you can procure yourself a contract. Let's move on to the Emissary quests, because these are working a teeny bit differently as well. The first thing you might notice is that you don't get a chest or cash at all as a reward, instead you just have your reward already on show for the world to see. Finishing up the Champions of Azeroth Emissary here will award a huge chunk of Azerite, the Horde War Effort Emissary awards a 290 plus item level piece of gear, so the same item level as actual world quests, I would have liked to maybe see a bit of a bump there with it being an Emissary reward, but there's still time for that to change I guess. And then the third emissary is for the Voldeni and once again awards a good chunk of Azerite. It looks like the emissary rewards that we see aren't actually all that special when compared to some of the more rewarding world quests. Maybe that's a good thing so you don't always feel pressure to finish your emissary quests or maybe they should just be a little extra bonus if you happen to finish the appropriate world quests while out adventuring. I think I would have liked to see them rewarding a little more so you feel at least a little inclined to get your emissary quests done. So they're a decent bonus and you actually have to actively work towards them. It is interesting to see the dev team move away from the randomness of chests and caches though and towards a fixed reward you can see before you even get started. If you don't care about the piece of gear an emissary is rewarding for one day, you probably won't care about that emissary at all. That wasn't really the case in Legion because your emissary cache could award a wide variety of things. I guess that's a good thing for anyone who might have had limited time to play. You can see right away whether or not an emissary is worth your time just by checking the current rewards. Finishing an emissary quest works in the exact same way, with the exception of the opposite faction's island. That emissary just wants four world quests throughout the three zones, which should be really easy to achieve. The others require four world quests tied to specific factions or zones. With one faction tied to each zone, those emissaries will be the easiest to complete. The two neutral factions might take a bit more effort, with you having to scan through every zone to find the appropriate faction's world quests that you will be willing to complete, and the opposite faction emissaries might end up being a mixed bag, depending on whether or not you decide to play with a new PvP mode, and how many players of the opposite faction you end up encountering. Whenever you finish an emissary quest, you will need to go and find the appropriate NPC to obtain your rewards. Hopefully they're all right next to a flight path like they were in Legion. The last thing to mention about world quests is that you can squeeze a little bit extra out of every single world quest reward by turning on war mode. There's a few pros and cons, but a very quick overview. War mode is the new open world PvP toggle option. You can turn it off or on in Ogrimmar or Stormwind. If you turn it on, you're going to be playing on war mode servers where everyone you see has actively opted into world PvP. So don't venture out alone, and if you do, maybe don't start any fights you know you can't win. There's a few other reasons to play with war mode on besides bashing in a few skulls. Goals. There's a potential 15% damage and healing bonus, you get the ability to use your PvP talents out in the open world, but the part that's related to this video is the 10% extra rewards from every world quest. That's going to start adding up pretty quickly if you can get away with it. The problem is that war mode might end up slowing you down quite a bit if you aren't prepared to put up a fight. I'd recommend putting a little group together before you set out for your world quests, just so you all have a little bit of extra protection when it comes to either fending off some skirmishes from the opposite faction, or just a laying them enough so you can get your extra rewards and get out of there without dying. I think grouping up is going to be incredibly important in Battle for Azeroth, especially if you're running around on war mode. But if you really don't want to risk skinning your knees, you don't have to play with war mode turned on, it's just a nice bonus for those who want a little risk reward type of gameplay. 
And that's it for our preview of the World Quest system in BFA. Quite a lot will remain familiar, even the parts that have changed slightly. I'm glad this system was kept for Battle for Azeroth, it's a much better format for any type of daily quest than we've had before, and it's all thanks to Diablo 3. Adventure mode revitalised that game, who knew it would copy paste over to WoW so well? Are you happy to see World Quests return in Battle for Azeroth? Would you prefer a different system take its place? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you want to grab yourself a few perks and have your name at the end of the video, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.